Litson RV where we literally are only one mile north of the Winnebago, Itasca, and Winnebago Touring Coach Division of Winnebago Industries right here in Forest City, Iowa. I want to welcome all of you to today's live monthly webcast and we're, we're going to walk you through new changes for the 2018 model year to the Winnebago Mini Winnie and Itasca by Winnebago Spirit. Uh, we have several different interiors that are new for 2018, but we also have two new floor plans that we have here in our studio today that we'll walk you through. And of course, we'll take all of your questions live as we do during all of our webcasts. So just before we get started, we'll cover a few housekeeping issues. Um, if you look in the lower right hand corner of your screen, uh, you'll see two tabs. You'll see a video tab and you'll also see a chat tab. What really makes these live webcasts so informational and value added for you, our guest, is when we're able to communicate with you and cover all of the questions that are important to you live as we go through these three floor plans and the entire Winnebago Mini Winnie and Itasca Spirit lineup. So again, just chat those questions in live and of course we'll cover those as we go through the webcast. Also keep in mind that we can cover all of your questions on any of our in-stock RVs with a live interactive presentation. Uh, live interactive presentation is a virtual appointment where we can cover that in the comfort of your own home or office. Uh, we can partner in uh, a spouse uh, through a conference call and you'll cover everything in live high definition video as though you were here at our dealership only a mile from Winnebago Industries here in Forest City. Also, I want to welcome a few special guests today. Uh, Sue Ann Hadachik is going to be monitoring our chats and helping us cover all of the questions that are important to you. Uh, Sue Ann is one of our marketing specialists here at Litson RV. Uh, behind the camera is uh, Callie Schmidt. She is our marketing manager here at Litson RV and also uh, Hope Litson, who is our marketing director. So again, as you have questions and we walk through that, I know we've already got a couple. We do have a couple questions already. Yep, so we'll cover those as we get started. We also want to make certain that we walk you through the new 31D floor plan, which is a new triple slide out with a walk around queen bed, as well as the unveiling of the all new 22M, which is the most nimble RV in the Class C industry that does include a walk around queen bed, but also a slide out alongside that driver's side. So we'll cover that floor plan as well, but let's make certain that we cover your questions in real time as we commit it to you. And the first question is? The first question is about roof. Wanting to know the difference between a rubber and fiberglass roof. Okay, great question. And that is a proprietary quality advantage uh, that Winnebago Industries has been utilizing for over 55 years. So we utilize a one piece fiberglass roof. Um, many of our competing models will utilize what's called a TPO or it's a rubber roof and they may try to claim that it provides the same amount of durability um, as a one piece fiberglass roof. However, think about it from the perspective of your RV. So we literally have fiberglass sidewalls uh, in your RV, one piece sheet of fiberglass. That's the same type of material that we utilize up on the roof and it literally interlocks and interlaps with your sidewalls. Uh, the only time that we'll ever penetrate that one piece sheet of fiberglass is any time that we might put in a skylight, an air conditioner, a roof vent, or an antenna. So what's great about that is literally you have no material that can break down. It's a continuous one piece sheet of fiberglass. Uh, Winnebago and one other RV manufacturer that doesn't manufacture Class C's, we've been utilizing that for over 55 years. It's durable, it's proven, uh, and it's clearly the highest quality in its class. Okay. So that was a great question. The difference between a TPO rubber roof and a one-piece fiberglass roof. Okay, I've got another guest asking if you could go over what Mini Winnie floor plans are available, if there are any that have gone away and what's new, which you briefly touched on. Okay, so good question. And I'll repeat each of these questions so that you can hear very clearly. Uh, the question was, with the new floor plans that we have, what has gone away? Uh, and there really is only one floor plan that's gone away and it's been replaced by a new and improved full wall slide out. That's the bunk bed. Mini Winnie 31H has been replaced uh, by the Mini Winnie 31G, which we do have all of that media on our website. Uh, inside our studio here today, uh, we have the new 31D that we'll cover here in a moment, as well as the 22M. Again, that's the most nimble RV with that walk around queen bed slide out. And then also we have our 22R towards the rear. Good on questions? Good on questions. Okay, so what I thought we'd do today is just start with the newest unveiling of the 22M. Uh, this is a floor plan that will sleep six people. Uh, it does have the overhead sleeping surface. 
it has that large U lounge uh, that has become so popular in the RV industry. And then it has a walk around queen bed in the rear bedroom. So we'll just briefly go into that. Later today, uh, Callie and Sue Ann will be doing um, our photo shoot and our video shoot. So we'll have over 100 pictures of this 22M uh, live on our website later today, as well as that high definition walkthrough video that many of you have known to come and love. So we'll step inside, we'll cover this, and uh, then we'll jump over to the 31D. And Sue Ann, please just interrupt with any questions as they come. Okay. So again, this is the 22M. Uh, it does include a walk around queen bed to the rear. Um, it then also includes the first with a slide out in the industry. So that is a true 60 by 75 inch bed to the rear. Uh, no maintenance is required to it. Uh, very simply slides in and out. But again, a nice memory foam mattress, a lot of storage in the rear bedroom. And then I'm gonna sneak behind you and just open this door and try not to trip you. To come back. So again, a lot of storage, walk around queen bed, slide out in the nimble 24 foot RV. Nice spacious bathroom, all in one with a large oversized shower. And the question that we always get, so I'll just go ahead and throw out the dimensions without getting on the toilet or in the shower. Uh, it's a 23 by 34 inch shower. So a nice oversized shower inside that encased bath in one. Uh, nice big U lounge, which has become so popular in the RV industry. Uh, this does convert into a sleeping surface. It does have the Ultra Lux Primera leather and then the overhead sleeping surface up front. So we do have the capability of sleeping six people in a 24 foot RV with a slide out and a walk around queen bed. Uh, some nice new one. Do you have a question? I do. Awesome. I have a couple questions for awesome. you. The first one is a guest asking to for you to give some detail regarding towing. Oh, good. Towing weights okay. with these units. You bet. Uh, so the question was, uh, what can the Mini Winnies tow? And um, that's one of the real nice enhancements that we've done with the Mini Winnie and Spirit lineup. Uh, we have 7,500 pound towing capacity hitches on all of our models except the 31D and the 31G. Uh, that 31D and the 31G with that extended overhang, we have a 5,000 pound factory installed tow package. Um, so again, you're gonna wanna be cognizant of that difference between gross vehicle weight rating uh, as well as gross combined weight rating, uh, but taking into account cargo carrying capacity, we have the capability of up to 7,500 in the entire lineup with the exception of the 31D and the 31G, uh, both of which are 5,000 pounds. So great question on towing. Another great question about automatic leveling jacks for yep. Mini Winnings. Okay, so another good question, and that question comes up a lot. How do I level the RV? And the one thing to keep in mind is why you might level your RV. Uh, and so the first point is obviously comfort. Uh, comfort when walking, comfort when sleeping. Uh, the second is um, the fact that with our ref refrigerators, um, they'll virtually burn uh, propane at any grade, but they will burn more efficiently if the coach is level. Uh, and the third and final reason is for ease of wear and tear on those slide out assemblies uh, if your Mini Winnie or Spirit does have a slide out. So um, again, just wear and tear long term. If the coach is level, it's gonna minimize um, any uh, durability on that um, slide out assembly. So uh, the question was though, what do we have for leveler options? And um, we have a lot of different leveler options here at our dealership. Um, a lot of people uh, will use the most cost affordable solution, which are very simply the Lynx levelers. Uh, they look like uh, large Lego blocks that you can stack up and drive over and get your coach level. That's obviously the most affordable. You can do that for less than a hundred bucks. Um, one great thing though, is that we're an authorized HWH factory installer of automatic hydraulic leveling jacks. Uh, so we can add automatic one touch hydraulic leveling uh, systems to any of our Winnebago Mini Winnies and Spirits. Um, it's also available in certain models as a factory installed option, um, but a real nice convenience. We can do it here at our dealership. We can also coordinate if we don't have the availability here, we can actually coordinate a factory installation down at HWH here in the state of Iowa. So good question on leveling. Great, one more follow-up question. 
um, in regards to chassis weight, sure. which I believe you touched on a little bit earlier, but yep. if you would cover those differences sure. one more time. So in the 22R and the 22M, um, we've opted to go with the 11,500 pound gross vehicle weight rating uh, chassis from Ford Motor Company. Uh, it is the same 6.8 liter uh, Triton engine, uh, whether it's an 11.5, 11,500 pound gross vehicle weight rating chassis, uh, or if it's a 14,500 pound gross vehicle weight rating chassis. So um, no changes in terms of powertrain. Uh, the only difference is going to be in weight. Um, so it's a, it's a heavier chassis. Will provide you more cargo carrying capacity, but that obviously comes at a cost. Um, the cost to go to a 14,500 pound chassis in the 22M or the 22R uh, is $3,600. And then also keep in mind that if you go from an 11,500 pound chassis to a 14,500 pound chassis, that doesn't completely flow through and translate to an additional 3,000 pounds of cargo carrying capacity because the chassis itself is higher. So you will pick up more cargo carrying capacity, uh, but you'll also carry along a little bit more weight but again, no changes to the powertrain. So uh, good question on the gross vehicle weight rating um, options between uh, the 22R and 22M with respect to the 11.5 or 14.5 chassis. That was great. Uh, next question, do you think they'll ever do these in diesel? Uh, good question. Um, so the question was, do we think that they'll ever do these in diesel? Um, we did offer the Power Stroke diesel uh, many years ago uh, in the Ford powertrain. A um, couple of issues that that ran into, we didn't have adequate gross vehicle weight rating um, availability in the chassis. Also keep in mind that diesel powertrain runs so efficiently, it's difficult to get a lot of heat out of that heater core. Uh, you'll see in the Midwest, as we run with diesels, we actually do include covers for the front end. Most people think that's because of snow. It's actually because it keeps that engine housing warmer, so it develops more heat within the cab. So um, to my knowledge, there are no plans to offer the E350 or the E450 in a diesel option. And again, that would come for Ford Motor Company. So good question, wanting to know uh, whether or not these might be available in a diesel offering. So as we're talking about um, gross vehicle weight ratings, uh, the question earlier was on what chassis. Um, one of the most often uh, questions that we get uh, is what is the cargo carrying capacity in this coach? Um, so uh, Kelly, we're gonna go ahead and step outside and we'll cover that so that I can compare and contrast the two. So what we just walked out of is the new 22M that does include that slide out. So it's gonna have a little bit less cargo carrying capacity by contrast to the 22R. Uh, this 22R is a great floor plan. It resembles one of our most successful uh, Mercedes-Benz Sprinter floor plans in the view of Navion. Um, both of these chassis are on 11,500 pound chassis. So um, what that translates into you for cargo carrying capacity is with the 22R, we have nearly 1,900 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. And in the uh, 22M, it's gonna be just under 1,300. So obviously that slide out drives a little bit more weight. Um, so then the follow-up question becomes, if we have 1,900 pounds of cargo carrying capacity or 1,300 pounds of cargo carrying capacity, what does that actually mean? So out of that number that we talk about, whether it's 1,300 or 1,900, the only thing that you have to deduct is water weight, so whatever you carry in your freshwater tank, the weight of your occupants, and any cargo. We've already deducted for a full tank of fuel and a full tank of propane. So again, coming out of the 1,300 pounds or the 1,900 pounds, people, cargo, and water. And most people don't travel with a full tank of water anyway, so that really provides a lot of cargo carrying capacity. Winnebago has always been very sensitive and very compliant with respect to uh, cargo carrying capacity definitions from RVDA. Um, they weigh each and every coach, so those numbers that are published are absolutely real. And again, the only thing that you have to take out of that is gonna be water weight, people, and cargo. Okay, next question. About, uh, we've talked about Ford chassis, yep. engines. Why no Chevys? Uh, good question. So the question was, we've talked about Ford powertrains uh, in the Mini Winnie and the Spirit. And, and by the way, that is the only option that we offer. Um, the only reason why we don't offer anything from Chevrolet or from General Motors is they no longer make RV chassis. Um, and so we don't have that offering. Uh, right now, our only option with the adequate gross vehicle weight rating 
uh, is going to be the E350 or the E450 with that Triton V10, which has been flawlessly performing. They now have the new six-speed transmissions, uh, so they're a little bit more fuel efficient. Uh, you also have less engine howl because you're shifting at lower RPM points. So a uh, great durable powertrain that we've been using for over a decade. It's proven and um, very durable from Ford. Okay. Next question is about solar panels. Okay. Good idea, needed, maybe not. How, how would you answer that question? Yep, so just to briefly touch on that, the question was uh, what solar options are available. And um, a couple of resources for you, actually. We have a couple of different archived live video webcasts in which we specifically talked about solar. So um, probably the biggest takeaway from that is keep in mind why you would actually go with solar. Um, solar has one purpose and one purpose only and it provides charging to your RV batteries. So if you do a lot of off the grid RVing, hotel camping, dry camping, uh, whatever the newest, sexiest RV industry slang term is, um, that could be a value to you. But if you're constantly going on the road from resort to campground to destination to home, uh, there probably isn't a, lot, a whole lot of value for solar because its sole purpose is to recharge your RV batteries. Uh, currently from Winnebago, um, there are no solar options on the Mini Winnie or the Spirit. However, here at our dealership, um, with all of our master RVDA certified technicians, we can customize any type of a solar setup that you'd like. Um, we can use other suppliers, but we've become very partial to ZAMP uh, because it's a very proven uh, solar provider out of Oregon. Uh, it is the industry leading provider of solar to RVs. It is the supplier that Winnebago utilizes uh, for all of their factory installs. Um, but we can customize any type of a solution. Most will go with a 100 or 200 watt uh, setup because it's more than adequate to recharge those RV batteries. Also keep in mind that most of these components are 12 volt uh, and the ones that you'll really need for 110 volt would be your microwave or convection oven or your over the um, ducted air conditioning system. So in most cases, um, solar is not necessary, but if that's something that you're going to do, we can customize any type of a setup that you'd like. Uh, typically, we can go up to 450 watts with a single solar controller. They're also expandable, so if we set up a 100 watt package for you and you decide that you want to add another panel, it's a very simple plug and play installation up on the roof. We also then offer that portable quick port alongside your patio side, so if you want to pan and tilt one, uh, and get very detailed about that thing facing the southern sky, especially with today being the longest day of the summer with the summer solstice, um, we can accommodate that for you as well. Okay, next question. We're gonna go back to rooftops. Awesome. Um, we'd like to talk about the difference between a crowned rooftop and a flat roof. Okay, yeah, so it, it depends a little bit on the floor plan um, and the type of uh, air conditioning system that we utilize. Um, we actually utilize both a true crowned roof and then one that just has a subtle pitch. And, and the reason we want that is we want it draining off into your awning gutters. If you look up, it's probably easier right up here, Kelly, without staring directly into our fusion lighting, uh, you can actually see a gutter that actually runs continuously along the top of that coach. That's also what we mount the awning in, and you'll see all of these are powered patio awnings. But with that, it runs the watershed down into that awning gutter, and then it will actually work towards your front or towards the rearward aft position. And the way that you level the coach will dictate that. So again, it just depends on the, on the floor plan and the type of air conditioning system, but um, our roofs will have some type of a subtle pitch to it or a pure crown. Okay, great. Next question, cargo carrying capacity yep. for the E450 chassis. Okay, good question. So cargo carrying capacity, we touched on that just briefly with the 22M and the uh, 22R. Again, this is gonna have just under 1,300 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. Um, the Mini Winnie 22R will have just under 1,900 pounds. Even with the three slide outs in this, the triple slide out 31D, we still have 1,800 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. Um, and again, out of that, you'll take out your occupant weight, water weight, and anything that you bring with you. Okay. And again, that's on the E450 chassis. Each of these 22 footers that we have here um, are in the 11.5 E350 setup, but again, plenty of cargo carrying capacity. Uh, you can save that $3,600. Um, but if that is important to you and you need more cargo carrying capacity, we can certainly order one for you as well. Okay, next question. Can you talk about paint and graphic options for the Mini Winnie's? Yeah, good question. So. 
Um, again, wanting to know a little bit about paint um, options. Um, with the Mini Winnie and the Spirit line, this is a high gloss premium sidewall. And really the concept here is it'll provide the appearance and durability of an automotive base coat, clear coat finish. And as you look along the overhead roof caps, sorry to make you swivel there, Kelly. Uh, you can see the deluxe paint that then's, then is added. Um, full body paint is currently not available uh, in these models uh, with Carrera Designs being only a mile down the road from us. Uh, we have done some custom paint applications. Um, but again, this is the standard champagne setup. There's also an option where we can actually do half paint. Um, that's that light bronze mist that you'll see available on Winnebago's um, option sheet and also online. But again, it only provides half paint, but we can do custom paint applications for you right here in Forest City if that's something that's important to you. Um, but the great thing with the high gloss premium sidewalls that are included in the Mini Winnie and the Spirit is that they provide that champagne metallic look uh, with the appearance and durability and not having to uh, incur any additional cost, which doesn't necessarily flow through to resale value. But good question on paint options. Follow-up question. You touched on this for wall construction on the outside. Yep. If you want to talk a little bit in detail about the, the wall construction. Sure. So touching just a little bit on interior wall construction, um, and really a good resource for you is our website. We have a link to the foursimplequestions.com, and it talks about the interior wall construction that Winnebago utilizes with our superstructure construction. Uh, Winnebago is the only RV manufacturer in the industry to literally drop test every single model that they have upside down with the exception of our B-Vans, um, providing that superstructure construction. Um, we also have um, the media and the detailed R values uh, that you might be looking for with respect to sidewall construction. Uh, we also have a nice cutaway right here inside our showroom, but uh, again, providing that superstructure and the only RV, our only RV manufacturer to literally drop test upside down every single model that we offer. So I think we're all caught up on questions. So Ann, please feel free to uh, just jump in when we do have additional questions. And again, that's what really we can provide to you is the most amount of value is covering the things that are important to you. So we'll jump inside the 31D. This is a new floor plan. It really evolves what used to be uh, you may have seen it as a 29B. It's very similar to our Aspect 30J, but it provides opposing slide outs in your main living area with a walk around queen bed slide out. Uh, we also have the exterior entertainment center option that you'll see on our website for this. Um, this is the outside entertainment high definition television uh, that is on this articulating mount. So depending upon where the sun's at, where you're sitting, uh, we can pivot this TV literally wherever you'd like it. Uh, it's high definition. Uh, it's LED, and so it's very energy uh, efficient. Uh, so if you are doing any of that off the grid RV. So with this particular floor plan, uh, we do have all of the pictures and high definition walkthrough in detail, so I'll just briefly cover this. Um, this also has the premium and convenience packages. So up front we have um, ultra leather, uh, Primera leather front cab seats. Um, you can also see the swivel with the cab seat cushion. This allows it to become an integral lounge chair to the coach. But really the appeal here is nearly 16 feet wide uh, with respect to opposable slide outs um, in your main living area uh, with the Dream Dinette and then also the ultra leather sofa sleeper upgrade. I'm gonna stop you right there awesome. while you were talking about the lounge chair you can yep. swivel. Is it possible to get that on the 22M floor plan? Uh, it is not currently an option on the 22M floor plan uh, for that to swivel. Um, there are some aftermarket accessories that are out there online that you can actually purchase the swivel seats um, and then do it yourself to be able to allow that to swivel. You just wanna be cognizant about seat belt positions. So for that reason, we don't do it here at our dealership, um, but again, um, some, sometimes it's dependent upon whether or not this area or transition into the cab is flush floor or not. You can see there's a small step here in the 31D and then also a small step behind Cali there. Okay. Good on question. Um, next question we have again on the 22M, wondering if you would recommend adding air springs to the 22M E350 chassis to improve the ride. Okay. So uh, the question was um, air springs. Um, and what they do and what the benefits are. So um, rear auxiliary air springs um, are available on all of the models, okay? And 
most people think that that's similar to air ride in a diesel pusher, um, but really it literally is two airbags on the rear axle. And you can then change uh, the PSI or the inflation level in those air springs to tailor your ride a little bit. So if you are carrying a lot of weight in the rear end, you can, you can actually adjust the ride a little bit by changing the pressure in your airbags. Technically, the main reason why we have rear auxiliary air springs is that even though we might have an 11,500 pound gross vehicle weight rating chassis, not only do we have that gross vehicle weight rating, but we also have axle weight ratings. So we have a weight rating for the rear axle and an axle rating for the front axle. Utilizing air springs, if you carry a lot of load in the rear, by increasing the airbag pressure, you can gravitationally move more weight towards that front axle to more evenly disperse your load. So really that is the technical reason why we have it is to ensure that we're compliant with rear axle weight ratings and front axle weight ratings, uh, but it can affect your ride a little bit, but that's really more of the subjective benefit of rear auxiliary air springs. Okay, uh, next question. Great questions today. When do you recommend to use the tow haul mode and is that um, and a feature that all of these would have. Yeah, so a good question. The question was, and Kelly, you can see it, it's actually on the on the steering column, wanting to know when you should use tow haul mode and why. And you'll, you'll see this on a lot of your light duty passenger cars and vehicles um, with tow haul mode. What that allows you to do is to shift at higher RPM points. And what that allows you to do then is to get a little bit more power in the mountains. Um, what also tow haul mode does in the Class C's is that it enables the grade braking capability. So, you know, the question becomes, when should I use it? And if you're not towing, really the only time that you should use it is if you're traveling in mountainous terrain to where you don't want that constant um, upshifting and downshifting. Um, but if you are towing, we do recommend um, that you have it in tow, mode, tow haul mode 100% of the time. Um, again, it shifts at slightly higher RPM points and it enables the grade braking capability in that six speed automatic transmission. Okay, next question. Do I need dual panes and do you have an idea of approximate cost? Okay, good question. So um, this particular coach um, has um, dual pane thermal insulated windows. Uh, it's not a lot of money. Uh, it's usually three or $400. It does carry a little bit of added weight, provides a slightly deeper, darker tint. Um, intuitively, you might think that the main reason for that is insulation, and it absolutely is. Uh, insulation in terms of temperature, um, but also acoustics. One of the biggest benefits to dual pane thermal insulated windows is when we try to fight humid climates, and you might have somebody utilizing the shower and you have a lot of that steam inside, you won't get the condensating um, during shower periods or potentially in the morning when you wake up uh, because they are dual pane. So not a lot of cost, it does add a little bit of weight, um, but again, it's just a benefit if, you, if that's something that's important to you. Again, condensation uh, during the morning and also during shower periods. Obviously there is some additional insulation and acoustic insulation. So good question on dual panes. They keep on coming in. Awesome, great um, questions. What is the advantage of a sway bar? Uh, good question. Um, what is the advantage of a sway bar? And um, we can actually install sway bars front or rear depending upon how you wanna tailor your ride. Um, it's literally just that in terms of a sway bar. As you're traveling down the road, you actually won't get the rock or the sway um, during cross traffic, um, but also during high wind periods. Um, and again, we can do that in the front or the rear or both, depending upon what you want. Um, we've also done additional um, stiffer sumo springs. We've done just about any kind of an installation that you want. Typically, we're pretty conservative here. Obviously, we're in Iowa, right? But uh, we're pretty conservative from the standpoint that we really recommend that you try to experiment with your RV. If you're unhappy with the ride or if you're unhappy with the sway, then we can customize your installation. We're not big believers of going into an RV parts store and opening your wallet. So it just kind of depends on where you travel, um, how heavy your coach is. Uh, if you travel on a lot of two lane, two lane roads, four lane roads, if you might be towing. Uh, but again, we can customize your ride depending on what you're looking at in terms of sway controls or potentially sumo springs. Good, good questions. And keep those questions coming in because that's how we can cover the things that are important to you. So again, as part of the premium package that we have in here, we have Coran um, countertop um, all the way through. So you can see these are the high luster DuPont Coran countertops along with uh, Coran sink top covers. Uh, we also have the new um, glass cover for the three burner range top. 
It then includes the backsplash and the side splash. We'll work our way to the rear and cover one of the things that people really like about this coach. It does have that walk around queen bed. Again, this is in the rear slide out. So it really expands this coach to be nearly 34 feet long uh, when you extend this slide out. Again, when you bring the slide out in, there's no maintenance to it. It just slides all the way forward. You don't have to collapse the bed, take your bedding down, anything like that. Uh, great walk around queen bed slide out. And then outside you'll see a large spacious trunk. Um, overhead we have the high definition television. There's a chest of drawers right here along with a nice little vanity area. Big spacious wardrobe closet in the 31D. And of course we haven't forgotten the pantry. And I'll have you walk through here, Kelly, so you can see that. Here, I'll open that up. Nice spacious pantry, and then again, we've got uh, roller shelves. And again, these are all full length extensions with metal drawer guides. So nice expansive pantry, well laid out by Winnebago because it's right inside your step well. So if you're doing a lot of outdoor uh, grilling or outdoor camping, you don't have to trounce through your coach to gain access to your kitchen. So again, a real spacious 31 foot coach. Uh, this is the 31D with opposing slide outs and a walk around queen bed. Uh, what models can I get with tank heaters? Uh, good question. Uh, tank heaters. So Winnebago actually calls that a heated drainage option. Uh, tank heaters are literally just that. We have a warming pad that is actually placed underneath the black tank and the gray tank and it allows you to then drain that RV in sub-freezing temperature. Uh, they are 12 volt heaters. If you very simply turn them on a while before you're gonna drain your tanks, it'll warm that area and then allow you to drain your tank. So again, some people will call those tank heaters. Winnebago refers to it as the heated drainage option and it is available on literally every Winnebago Mini Winnie and Spirit. Awesome, so we're gonna go ahead and step outside. So great questions today, and that's really what allows us to provide the most value to you, cover the things that are important to you. So as you have questions, uh, be sure to chat those in. Also remember that we staff uh, chat uh, with our factory trained consultants and our parts experts um, right directly on our website. So when you click on chat um, on Litson.com, uh, you'll actually be chatting with a Litson RV employee uh, during normal business hours. So. Uh, we can cover your questions real time on chat that way as well. Um, but again, during these webcasts, that's really what makes things so informational for you. Um, also keep in mind, we can do this same type of a live virtual appointment uh, at any point in time on any of our in-stock RVs that we have directly with our factory trained consultants. Is all the piping inside the coach? Uh, good question. So the question was, is all of the piping inside the coach? And it depends upon the floor plan. Um, I can tell you that all of the water tanks and water pumps will always be enclosed inside the coach. Um, but it depends upon the floor plan, which is why we then offer that heated drainage option. The thing that's typically gonna be most susceptible uh, would be that exterior wash station. Uh, but again, we can actually um, terminally separate that exterior wash station. So if you're traveling quite a bit in uh, cold weather climates, we can actually separate that exterior shower or wash station uh, from any of your um, exposure to the elements. So we can actually just set that aside, know that you're not gonna use it, uh, and then when you do wanna use it, we can throw that valve and then allow water to flow to it. So again, the water tank and the pump will be enclosed, but it depends upon the floor plan in terms of other exposure. So great questions today as we wrap up here, where we covered uh, the new 22M. Uh, that is live on our website right now with just some standard stock photos that we took when we first ordered our very first one. Uh, Winnebago brought it down to us and we showcased it. Uh, we grabbed some photos at that point in time. Uh, but this all new interior with the Cascade will be live on our website here later this afternoon. Uh, again, the most nimble RV in the industry with a walk around queen bed and a slide out. Uh, the new 31D, which is that triple slide out floor plan. And then also the 22R. So again, we really appreciate all the great questions today, uh, really covering the things that are important to you. Thank you to Sue Ann for doing such a wonderful job with chat. And thank you, Callie, where we covered all of the new Winnebago Mini Winnie and Itasca Spirits uh, here at Litson RV, where we literally are only one mile north of the Winnebago 
Itasca, and Winnebago Touring Coach Division of Winnebago Industries right here in Forest City, Iowa. We hope you all have a great summer.